heat transfer is important to many natural and engineered systems, both as a primary process and as an indicator or a tracer. Here's an example of a thermal image that's made of a wolf pup and images like this are used to diagnose potential problems in the animal without having to actually uh, inspect the animal up close. So it's a, a remote diagnostic technique. And certainly global warming has placed the whole topic of heat transfer high on the list of critical natural processes as we try to understand how heat moves from the sun uh, through solar radiation is distributed over the earth uh, and serves to warm up the planet. So here's an example of uh, a thermal plume being emitted into Lake Michigan, uh, a natural process uh, with certainly uh, the imprint of man. And um, as a result of this, there have been a variety of techniques that have been developed to uh, determine heat transfer, to image it. In the center, this is a, a temperature distribution of a house used or made by a special thermal imaging camera. And over here on the right, this is a Schlieren image. And this is made by detecting small changes in the um, optical properties that are caused by small changes in uh, temperature. So the uh, index of refraction of air changes as a function of temperature and uh, this technique is able to pick that up and you can see the uh, laminar region of uh, flow coming up off of this uh, heat plume and then it becomes turbulent uh, with increased distance. And so there are a variety of other applications here. This is another Schlieren image of two goblets filled with different temperature fluids. Uh, this is uh, a uh, hot steel bar and the um, thermal energy is radiating off it and you can see uh, it's being conducted along the bar. Uh, along this, the axis of the bar. And uh, thermal processes are also important in multi-phase flow where we've got a block of solid water here of um, ice that melts through um, thermal processes and uh, is converted to uh, water. So some very interesting uh, physics going on there and also very important process in the overall uh, pr uh, Earth system for uh, looking at climate change and uh, sea level rise. So to understand heat transfer, there are going to be three main concepts that we're going to want to look at. The storage of heat in materials, uh, heat sources, and then flux or, or heat transfer. Let's take a look at how energy stored within water changes as a function of temperature. This is a plot of the internal energy or the energy per unit of mass, for example, the joules per kilogram, uh, changes as a function of temperature for water. And we're going to span the, uh, the, the, a fairly wide range of temperature from these low temperatures where water is a solid as ice and higher temperatures here where it's a vapor. Uh, so we don't label the temperature field, but this would be the, uh, the, the melting point of, the, of ice and the vaporization or the boiling point of, uh, of liquid water. And the, you see that the internal energy increases with temperature and it does as this kind of step-like uh, function. And what we see is that there are these two steps uh, at the uh, boiling point and the freezing point. And these uh, steps are uh, marked by this increase in the internal energy that is uh, at, at the solid to liquid transition. This is the latent heat of fusion. And then if we uh, go up here to the liquid to vapor transition, it's the latent heat of vaporization. So this jump in internal energy is, uh, is this much uh, energy. We can we look this up. And then we also have this uh, gradual increase in internal energy, and that's uh, the sensible heat. So we'll look at that one first. Uh, the middle part of the plot there, uh, where it's a, a slope, this is an increase in internal energy uh, with temperature. 
And if we take the slope of that plot, then we have the uh, internal energy. Uh, we, have a, a, we have a term that's the internal energy um, divided by uh, temperature. And so that slope is, um, well, if we can think of the change in internal energy uh, with temperature over this range as uh, equal to uh, this term right here, where here's the temperature change, and then this would be the slope. Uh, and so this would be, so we might do this like, like so. We might say uh, this would be equal to a, uh, a change in internal energy. So like that. So a change in internal energy uh, with temperature. Uh, this term Cp is the slope of this line. Uh, and we have delta T. So we can just, we just see from the units that this term Cp is the energy per mass per degree uh, of temperature. And here I'm using theta as the, uh, to indicate uh, temperature units. And so this uh, term Cp with these units is called the specific heat capacity. And it's the energy that it takes to change a unit mass of the material by uh, a, a, by degree C. Um, and so we can um, measure this uh, heat capacity. It's going to be the uh, rate at which uh, sensible heat is stored in the fluid, or which the rate at which sensible heat changes um, uh, with as a function of temperature. So sometimes it'll be more convenient to think of the energy stored per unit volume of a fluid and we can do that by taking the heat capacity and multiplying by the density. Uh, so the, the change in the sensible heat uh, with temperature would be equal to this term right here. And uh, this is just the same as the, the one we have here, except we multiply by density. And we can confirm here that the units uh, work out to, to give us energy per unit of mass. Okay, so the specific heat capacity is going to be an important quantity to know. Uh, there are, are um, tables where you can look up this quantity. Here are the values for water, uh, 4.18 uh, joules per gram per degree K. Uh, and there are various other units that you can find here depending upon uh, what's required for the problem. Uh, these are some other compounds and you notice it starts off at air, uh, goes up through copper and then there's a break right here. There are many others. Uh, you can you can look these up uh, in, in a variety of tables uh, on the internet. And so I compiled some of the uh, examples here. The heat capacity of water uh, is given here. I just cited that as 4.18. Um, ice is um, a good bit lower. So when you uh, have the phase transition from water to ice, you get a lower uh, a reduction by about a factor of two in the heat capacity. The amount of heat that can be stored uh, per unit mass of the material. Uh, air is a good bit less uh, still and CO2 is smaller even uh, than air. Gold is uh, much smaller yet and hydrogen is, uh, is a lot higher uh, than water. So this is, uh, this is probably a good estimate of the range of uh, heat capacities. Looks like about two orders of magnitude with gold being on the low side and hydrogen, a very light gas, being on the, the high side. And within this range, water, liquid water, is quite high. It's in the upper uh, 90% or so. Okay, so that's sensible heat, the heat that's stored uh, in this region, but we also have the heat that's stored as latent heat as uh, the temperature changes over this phase change and we have the, the water transitioning from ice to liquid or from liquid to vapor. And when that happens, uh, if you go in, uh, over this transition for, uh, with incre increasing temperature, then you have to put a lot of energy into the system to go up this step. And that'll be either the latent heat of fusion or the latent heat of vaporization. And here are some examples of uh, these latent heats. 
uh, again for various different compounds and let's just focus on uh, water so the latent uh, heat of fusion of water is uh, 334 kilojoules per kilogram so that's the height of that step uh, right there and then if we take a look at what the energy change is from sensible heat by heating the water up from 0 to 100 degrees C that's going from there up to there that's uh, about 420 kilojoules per kilogram so a little bit more than the energy that you have to put into melting the water and then look at this in order to vaporize the water you have to put in much more five times more energy to go from here to here than you do to go from here to here okay so uh, we're storing a lot of energy in water vapor as a result of causing it to transit go across this phase transition from liquid to vapor okay so that's how heat is stored let's look at some heat sources heat can be generated internally within uh, a fluid or a solid or, or potentially a gas from a variety of different processes within fluids the flow of the fluids uh, we know that during fluid flow energy is dissipated it shows up as head loss uh, and that is caused by friction and that energy is going to heat and so that can change the temperature uh, and serves as a mechanism for energy dissipation in flows also there are chemical reactions uh, chemical reactions will either consume heat or give off heat radioactive uh, decay is a, another way to produce heat that's a, a, a really an important way of uh, producing heat within the earth uh, biological mechanisms uh, you can see this pooch has uh, got a lot of different a lot of temperature variation across his, his head and that's a, a result of uh, different metabolic factors or uh, circulation of blood and and so on um, microwaves can uh, can create heat sources uh, as the microwaves interact with solids and also heat can be created as uh, electrical resistance uh, in this, uh, this, 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 well, it's, this isn't a toaster, but this is an electrical heater. You pass uh, electricity through it, and the uh, electrical um, power is dissipated and produced as heat. And this is used as a way of heating up either your toast in, in the morning or a variety of other processes that require uh, heat transfer on an industrial scale. Okay, well, let's, before we leave this, let's just uh, check out the units here. So as a heat source, um, we're going to be interested in how much heat energy is produced per unit volume at, per unit time. So we might see the heat source described like this, energy per unit volume per unit time. We also might see it as a power per unit volume because we just need to keep in mind that energy per unit time is uh, is power 